Hi, here I am again to talk about digital technologies for the fashion projects. As we saw in the first lecture, the digital fabrication technologies you can access are divided in two macro groups, the subtractive and the additive ones. In this lesson, we will focus on additive manufacturing technologies, more commonly known as 3D printing. As designers, it is very important to know the potential and limits of the available technologies. For this purpose, it is useful to have a specific in-depth exploration on additive manufacturing technologies, namely in this way because they are able to materialize ideas through the overlapping of several layers of material without the need to use molds. This makes almost total freedom of conception possible. However, the possibility to conceive, materialize and produce any shape with 3D printing must not take away from us the awareness that not everything can make sense if created with these techniques. Therefore, it is important to understand the relationship between design and 3D printing. This is a dialogic relationship of interchange, which is interesting and possible thanks to the change in production models, not only for the creation of products, objects and accessories, but also for the new forms of production and distribution that are spreading. Linking this reflection to the fashion field, the change in the production chains and the way of designing things are particularly evident looking at the jewellery world. In the past, jewellery making was typically a matter of the craftsman's manual skills. At this time, instead, there is a growing tendency to produce jewellery starting from a virtual model that are materialized through 3D printers. First of all, a qualification should be made. The 3D printing diffusion does not replace other manufacturing and designing methods, although it extends and completes them. In this image, for example, you can see how additive manufacturing combined with everyday objects, sometimes even disposable, allow you to beautify and also customize them. And this is also very important for the fashion world, a world in which coexist solutions that involve either large volume production, that is industrial production, limited collection and tailor-made solutions. First of all, let's better understand how additive technologies work. Scientific terminology identifies additive manufacturing as the standard term for all the applications of this technology. However, 3D printing is the most used term. Although it is not a scientific expression, it's the colloquial name generally used to define all the additive technologies that are divided into big families, deposition processes and binding processes. When it comes to deposition processes, the materials are extruded through a nozzle that can be heated or not depending on whether it is printed with polymers or with base extrusion. The most diffuse deposition technology is FDM, which stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. In an FDM machine, in order to shape your 3D model, the thermoplastic filament is heated to a semi-liquid state. The nozzle draws the object and the related supports one layer at a time. At the end of the process, the supports are removed and the part is finished. Otherwise, when it comes to binding processes, objects are created through the aggregation of layers of pre-spread powder or through the curing of photopolymers. Among these technologies, the most relevant are stereolithography or SLA for short and selective laser sintering, also called SLS. The operating scheme of an SLA printer works in this way. A laser hardens UV curable liquid following the geometry of your 3D model. The printing plate lifts off the liquid tank after each layer until the object is complete. Lastly, it is necessary to carry out the post-production of the piece to wash away the extra liquid and remove the supports. The operating scheme of the SLS machines belonging to the same family of binding processes is at the same time similar, but deeply different. In this case, there is no liquid in the tank, but a powder that binds its particles with the passage of the laser beam. This means that the power itself is able to support any suspended parts, 
so you just have to remove the excess powder at the end of the printing without creating additional supports. But if there are many types of 3D printers, how do you choose which type of technology should be used? This question does not have an universally viable answer. In fact, it is necessary to understand each time what might be the various factors involved which depend on the morphological complexity of the 3D models and its details, the size of the piece, the material requirements, the value perceived by the final product, the need to integrate other materials at the production stage. For example, if you need to print a very detailed part, it will typically be advisable to choose SLA or SLS printers, which typically have more accurate tolerances. Please note in particular that the SLS technologies doesn't need supports, so it's recommended to realize Voronoi pieces or parts with very prominent overhang. If the part contains moving elements, such as gear or chains, the choice of the type of 3D printer depends on the geometry. At the same time, you have to consider that the SLA and SLS printers have limited processing chambers and quite expensive production costs. For this reason, it's recommended to use the 3D printers only for the production of small or medium-sized parts. On the contrary, very large pieces that cannot be cut into subdivisions are usually produced with FDM printers thanks to the area speed and larger print area. Besides, currently FDM technology has a greater variety of materials available than the other two mentioned technologies. And if you want to create objects that are not only aesthetic but also functional, you will probably have to focus on the use of FDM 3D printers which filaments with different composition and colors can be extruded. There also exist filaments that integrate the polymers with marble, graphene, carbon powders, able to give the pieces the technical and haptic very interesting characteristics. At the same time, there are biocompatible resin and structural powders for binding processes, which means they can also be used for functional applications. The choice of material and the final finish also influence the appearance of the final object's perceived value. The overlapping of layer is generally visible in objects built with FDM 3D printers, but you can conceive geometries able to hide or even enhance them. In case this is not possible, it must be said that objects produced with SLA or SLS are perceived as more valuable even if they may show alteration a long time. SLA outputs may become more fragile if exposed to sunlight for long periods of time. SLS print may show color alteration of the parts in contact with the human body because the paint is usually applied during post-production. In order to make inclusions of other components during the materialization phase or to print directly on an existing substrate, for example to 3D printing on a textile bed, the only technology that can be used is FDM. There can be many advantages in adopting this technique. First of all, having objects that contain other parts that cannot be disassembled. Secondly, working on the geometry and density of the infill to give secondary function directly using the slicing software. Lastly, creating structures that, once detached from the working plate, add three-dimensionality to the fabric, thus creating 4D prints. All those indications are not mandatory, although they are recommendation and there are always exceptions. This is precisely why the ability to make the best use of this technology is only acquired through an experimental use. In conclusion, the suggestion is to approach additive manufacturing in an experimental way, by trial and error. Mainly, it is important to think about the constraints of 3D printing from the design stage considering wall thicknesses, hollowing, assemblies and tolerances between parts in general, workpiece orientation in the machine, 
dimension of embossed and engraved details, possible need of internal and or external supports, possible positioning of holes and channels for unloading an internal material. So, you may assert that with 3D printing it is possible to design and manufacture shapes that were previously impossible. In this way, additive manufacturing technologies influence the designers who change the aesthetic of their projects. And you could be a part of this revolution.